Chris will be there. Row number one, your super senior A50 plus riders, Mike Bruce, Rodney Carrier, Jeff Webb, Jeff Ford, Mark Archman, Mark LaBelle, Roger Lowe, Rod Marshall, Craig Moore, Sean Mullen, Steve Schoenberger, Jeff Smith, and Rob Service. Row number one, we see that. Now ready to go in turn one. Riders on row one, ready to go here. In ten seconds. All right, guys. So I uh, thought we'd do a little bit of narration on this particular video. We're at a different location than we normally are. Zach and I generally run OXCR, but uh, IXCR was racing on a Saturday, so we decided to run out there and race the Oliver Brothers race there at IXCR. And, uh, it's definitely a good time. Don't plan on narrating over the whole thing here, but uh, we'll uh, just hit some of the hot spots or some of the interesting things that go on during the race. So, uh, I ran the Row 1 50 Plus Expert class, A class, I guess it, they call it. Um, so, really just wanted to gauge my speed really against uh, the guys in the uh, A class. At OXCR, they don't really designate uh, A, B, or C. We, we don't generally have enough to do that, so uh, it's hard to tell you know, the fastest guys you know, what class they generally run in. So. I thought it would be fun to ride in the A class and just see how my speed compares to those guys. So as you see, I got a uh, second place hole shot and uh, first place. Uh, that guy's pretty quick for sure. Uh, I still see him up there just a little bit, uh, but uh, running close to his pace right now. Uh, he's definitely pulling away just a little bit, but that was again kind of the point of running the A class is to kind of gauge my speed against an entire row of A class riders. And I think there were 13 A class riders on our start. And right now I'm currently running in second. Well, I'm currently running in third. And this is not a points race for me, so I wasn't, um, didn't really feel the need to push you know, as hard as maybe I normally would if I was trying to win up points series or whatever, so we just bypassed the gate there, or the uh, end of the lap tent there, and uh, scoring, I guess, is a better way to call it that. So we're now onto the course, and I'm kind of caught back up to second place again. So I'm kind of feeling pretty good about my speed right now. Loved the track. It was really good when we were on it. Uh, Zach rode the PM bikes, so he rode um, at noon. I, this is at 9.30 in the morning, so the heat's actually not not too bad right now. Dirt is really, really good. And like I said, I really enjoyed the track. Um, basically, uh, some really dumb mistakes kind of, uh, kind of messed me up. And, uh, a couple of things that were kind of out of my control kind of messed me up. I watched another video on YouTube and I seen a guy got lost in the same place that I did. So there was a spot in the track where there was either some tape down or it wasn't it wasn't marked very well. And a lot of us ended up up in the campground uh, flying around somebody's camper. Uh, had to go back in the woods and try to find our way back over to the track. And so I wasn't the only one that did that. I followed a couple of guys. We all got lost, all in my class, and then obviously when we made it back to the course, who knows how many people had in our class had got by us. So that was one mistake, and then uh, there's another spot where I think the entire, probably the top five, six, seven guys in my class all kind of missed the track, and then everybody that was in the back got ahead of us. I think that's on these, this first lap, so we'll, we'll see that coming up. So. This was 
dumb mistake number one. The trail went to the right, uh, so I kind of followed the trail and almost almost went through the tape there. I wasn't looking far enough ahead, so the actual course went to the left. Uh, so I lost a few seconds there. Dumb mistake number two is coming up, so we'll see that here in a minute. This was uh, quite a bit steeper than what it looked like. A couple people were flipping their bikes over backwards on this. It's, as usual, the GoPro doesn't do it any justice. But, yeah, I kind of kind of blew my lead, and once I messed up that second time, then I, I hear behind me some a couple of guys have caught up to me, so I had a pretty good flow going there until I made a couple of really dumb mistakes. So now I know there's a guy pretty close to me. So time to kind of put my head down here again and see if I can pull back out a little bit, but I don't, I don't think that happens. Thing this race had uh, a bit more of than what we normally have is these grass track sections. OXCR definitely has some grass track, but not not as much as what uh, this particular OXCR race had. So definitely used a little bit more gas than what I normally do. We got back and Zach and I were both looking at our bikes, and we had both used quite a bit more gas than normal. But you know, in those grass tracks, you're pretty much wide open. So this guy makes it by, and I think uh, follow him for a while. I don't really know anybody's names because this is not the normal series of the race. This actually was still had dew on it and it was fairly wet. Um, it doesn't really look like it, but our race started at 9.30. And so some of this you had to kind of tiptoe on a little bit. Be just a little bit careful dusty on this end, where the sun is. So I guess I'm in fourth place right now, and I'm feeling pretty good about my speed. I'm, you know, this, this particular guy here is not pulling away, and I think we actually catch up to the guy that's in second here in a little bit. I liked this section down through here, kind of through this creek bottom. Zach said it got pretty nasty during the PM race. Pretty dusty, but it's pretty good for us. Flowed really well. Had a lot of, a lot of really nice flow to it. And, uh, made it made it pretty enjoyable. This this actually down here was was fairly wet at first. There again, I'm kind of sneaking up on that guy here just a little bit. Feeling pretty good. Dumb mistake uh, number three is coming up. So right there, believe it or not, is a is a short way around. I kind of seen some some extra signs over there and couldn't really tell exactly what they were. And come to find out, that's, I guess you'd call it the pro line or the hard line, but my understanding is it was easier, almost as easy as, or easier than uh, what we are just taking and it's way out of the way. So I'm sure I let a couple people by by taking that long route, but you know, some of the other guys followed me around that long route. Uh, 
the guy in front of me now, he seemed to have a little bit more pace than me, so I didn't want to hold him up, so I let him by. And uh, I think we both catch up to the guy in front of him. morning was horrible. We had an, we had an hour uh, to sign up once we got there. We had over a two-hour drive to get there, and the race was at 9.30 in the morning, so we got up at 5.30 in the morning to get there, and we had an hour, hour to spare when we got there. And at 9.15, I was still standing in line. The line was really, really slow for registration. And so I had Zach go back and start getting my gear ready and get my bike off the trailer. I didn't even have time to eat anything before the race. So that comes back to bite me here later in the race. By the, end, by the last lap, I uh, was getting some cramps and my left hand was kind of locking onto the handlebar, which basically never happens. But basically racing on an empty stomach here because I was literally running back to the pits I think I got done with registration at about 9.20 or 9.25. Luckily, the race was uh, running just a little bit behind. Otherwise, it would have been, I would have probably started with one of the later rows. Some of this section here coming up is not knocked down at all since we're the first race. And, there, I'm kind of catching up to that that guy who I think now is in maybe fourth, but hard to tell how many guys passed us when we took that long line. If any of them took the short line, they're they're ahead of us now. Coming through this section, uh, it's basically never been ridden on. It seems like in a, in a long time, maybe since last year. We'll get to a section here in a minute that we're literally blazing through the weeds and just kind of looking for arrows to find our way through, which was kind of fun. some minor adjustments to the suspension on my bike last week and uh, bike's feeling really good at this point feel really good about my speed so here we kind of start through an area that's basically we're just going right through the weeds so you really got to keep your eyes open and look for arrows It was a lot of fun. This was a fun little section. That was a cool section, basically blazing through the woods, and then we break out onto a, basically like a straw field. And uh, I think we get our next dumb mistake up here. So you can see that the guy ahead of him is not too far out, so we're at least keeping him honest. I was surprised at the end of the race, I uh, looked at scoring, and everybody in the race uh, went six laps, which was, Testament, I guess, the fact that everybody is, uh, you know, everybody's about the same speed or close to the same speed. The top, top three guys were probably pretty close to doing seven laps, I would think, because they were running a minute to a minute and a half. It looked like faster each lap, so they were probably getting close to getting an extra lap on us. But uh, it was interesting to ride, you know, with uh, everybody being pretty, pretty similar. Caught a little log there under the dirt. Just about fit it. Coming down to the, the 
pro hill here a little bit. You can see all the people coming. It's pretty easy, but actually quite steep. The GoPro doesn't really again do it justice, but it's it's pretty steep. Zach didn't get any GoPro footage of this race. He had been at fuel camp the entire week and he barely had time for anything else. So if you notice here, we're flying around in the field and there are bikes kind of just like driving around trying to figure out where to go. I think that's all the leaders in my class, I think. I don't know who else it would be. We were row number one and you see to the right there, there's guys motioning people the right way. So I'm thinking now that the people that were in toward the back of, of the pack in my class are now in the front. That's kind of what I'm thinking because all those bikes that were riding around in that field trying to figure out where to go had to have been in my class because again, we were, we were row number one. So I have no idea what, what spot I'm in now whatsoever. This is where I think we're coming back in where we initially started now. The line on the right there was way faster. You'll see there's, I uh, just got passed by a guy who took that line on the right. Dust isn't too bad for our race. When I was watching the PM race, the dust through here was really bad. Zach said it got really silty. So, uh, like I said, Zach didn't have any footage of this particular race. He got sucked into a rut there. Uh, Zach took a really bad, really bad fall on the first lap. He came out of the expert class whole shot in the PM race, I think third or fourth. And when the pros came around, I was waiting on him and took longer than normal because normally by that time he's caught up to the pros and uh, wasn't quite running the pace that he normally does. And come to find out he had, uh, here's my next kind of dumb mistake here, by the way, is getting kind of caught on a route down in that hole right there. But all part of it so anyway Zach uh, Zach hit a stump that was under the silt in the track and uh, went over the bars and set about third or fourth gear wide open and took a pre pretty hard tumble broke his front brake lever off uh, all the way down at the perch so he had no front brakes and his uh, front end was all twisted up and looked like his bars are bent a little bit and of course he was really beat up but Zach ended up placing I think seventh in expert bike and 18th overall running the entire race with no front brake so I don't know how you run a, run a race that fast with no front brake but uh, that's what he did so we don't have any footage of it but um, yeah Zach got seventh in expert so here's my next dumb mistake by the way You've seen that uh, the track went right, and for some reason I went left. So, like I said, multiple dumb mistakes for me. Uh, two guys, two guys just passed me. So, is what it is. I should be looking further ahead, I guess, and paying more attention to the arrows. But just really, just enjoying myself. The track was was like I said, track was really fun. It was really good when we were on it. This little section here got hard later in the race because every time I'd come up to it, there was somebody either stuck on the hill or somebody stuck in those logs in the bottom. So I had to take an alternate line around it once or twice and barrel past some people once or twice. So it's kind of a bad spot. We'll be back at OXCR this weekend, uh, East Fork 
East Fork uh, race is coming up this week. Coming up on scoring here to finish our first lap. So for my first ever IXCR race in the 50 plus A class, I had a really good time. Other than a few issues on the track that were kind of out of my control and some that were in my control, I had a good time. <laughs> 